Amen. We are live. Hi and there. I'm hearing an echo from myself. You're not hearing it, Lynn? No, I don't hear it. Okay. Well, hopefully, our, my uh, when we get people I, on, they'll be able to tell us whether they can hear it. So uh, I'm gonna just change some settings here. It may be my Bluetooth. Mm. How know. about now? Um, no, yeah, that's that's better. That's it's gone now. So okay. Maybe it was. okay. Anyway, okay. that was the issue. Here we go. So, welcome to Wild Hair Talk with Lynn and Hadas. People who are here live, people who are watching the replay, we are excited to have you here. And tonight we are going to talk about protein, which is uh, somewhat contentious subject if you will you get all sorts of different things from different directions so i see we're getting some people on so if you are joining us drop us a comment say hello tell us where you're from tell us uh, uh, what you think about protein do you think you're getting enough protein because um, i was just telling lynn before we started that um, i remember when i was younger and especially through going through various vegetarian stages of my life at different levels, being told that, um, oh, it's all a myth, you know, North Americans get more than enough protein and so on and so forth. But I did some research and it's interesting because um, it's not as clear cut as all that. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll get this. I'll just introduce myself really quickly. And then if you want to introduce yourself, Lynn. So my sure. name is Vitasa Vietar. I'm a life coach. I'm an advocate for well-being. And I love to help people with silver hair, like myself, like Lynn here. Look at that gorgeous silver curly mop. Oh, my ah, mop is right. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. But anyway, so people like us, we are in our 60s. Uh, we are determined to live a very long time mm. in a very healthy fashion. And we would like to help you do the same. So that's why we're here. Lynn, you want to introduce yourself? Well, I'm Lynn Day. I live on Cape Breton Island and the Atlantic coast of Canada. And I am an entrepreneur. I own a very busy daycare and uh, working on another brick and mortar. But I also am a uh, transformational coach, a bodybuilding coach. And um, when I say bodybuilding, it doesn't matter if you're some people say toning, but if you are toning, you're also bodybuilding, just not to the extent of what bodybuilding sounds like today. So anyway, we're all busy people and uh, looking forward to spending the next half hour with you. Yeah. So I put up, we have a LinkedIn user says, I got silver hair. That's awesome. We can't see your name though. I'm not sure. I know that in Facebook, you need to give StreamYard permission to see your name. I don't know if it's the same uh, for LinkedIn. I've never actually seen this. I've seen Facebook user. I've not seen LinkedIn user. Hey, hello. So uh, let us know your name. Who are you, LinkedIn user? <laughs> well, that's nice that we've got someone on, on from that, uh, that uh, social media format. I post there a lot. Do you? Good. Yeah. It's Good. one of my favorites. It's got a lot Good. of a lot of people who are interested in being healthy and, and interested in building a business. So uh, it's a it's a place where people chat. Oh, Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. Why is it showing you as LinkedIn user? That's crazy. Yeah, Suzanne's a friend of mine and uh, her curls rival rival yours, Lynn, as I recall. And uh, lovely to see you. Oh, Suzanne. really? <laughs> yeah. She actually runs um, our, one of our local uh, networking places, and it's uh, it's uh, awesome. I'm looking forward to doing events there again pretty soon. We should talk, Suzanne, because we're we're getting there to being comfortable with actually having people. So we'll have to talk. So protein. Let's talk about protein. So like I was saying, when uh, when I was younger and I remember reading all sorts of things about, oh, you, certainly nobody needs, yeah, white, long, and curly, yeah. <laughs> but, um, 
we all we all grew long hair during the pandemic and some of us kept it that way yeah and that uh, that you know that uh, you know we eat more than enough protein and uh, of course you have to oh friday morning come on down have to, we'll have to have a conversation um where was i protein <laughs> and um the thing, the thing is, is that it, for for one thing, there's a question about the quality of the protein that people are ingesting, how good it actually is for them. And the other thing is, is that as you get older, it's funny because I found this article, uh, it's really nice and comprehensive. It's from the Mayo Clinic. And it's interesting because the title is, are you getting too much protein? And then they talk about, you know, how much protein you need and so on. And then they start talking about uh, sarcopenia, those of us who are over 50 and in danger of losing muscle. So uh, we want to build muscle, not to uh, not lose it. So uh, I mean, we should do it. We should do one um, a show sometime about lifting Lynn, and Lots how we, and how important it is, uh, you know, for even, even, you know, you're a bodybuilder, but uh, even people who don't want to be bodybuilders, if they want to stay strong and healthy and avoid falls and avoid fit, yeah. muscle weakness, you know, it's really important to get that resistance training in. And you don't need to lift giant barbells. You can, you can you lift cans of soup. You know, that's kind of like the classic. Who has cans of soup? Do you have cans of soup? I don't. But anyway, that's just. <laughs> Just to the side, but the cans of whatever it is that that you have in your pantry, you can lift them and you can. You can Absolutely, build bags of potatoes. Them. Yeah, look at that. We can do that. So, um, yeah. So uh, there's no question that as we get older, we actually do need more protein than people who are younger. So that might explain some of the some of the conflicting information. The other thing that this article says is that people who are active people who lift people who run people who exercise also need more protein than couch potatoes who are sitting there you know eating pork rinds or whatever it is that they <laughs> know that they should have so when um, i know it's a keto thing isn't it i mean obviously i never yes. into that yes. in jewish but uh, but uh, it's a keto thing they like they eat pork rinds like other people eat potato chips yeah and, um, if it works for them, what can I say? But um, yeah, Linda, do you have any thoughts on protein, especially as I said, given your bodybuilding background? I'm sure you do. Well, with protein, it's um, it's an amino acid, uh, like chemical building block. So we we all have it in our system, but we need to add good quality protein so that our muscles, at a cellular level, will be healthy and be able to sustain our body. Uh, with strength and longevity. So amino acids, they build and repair our muscles and our bones. Um, and uh, of course, it makes our hormones and our enzymes and all of the things that work together um, in the chemistry of our bodies. And so if we, it, it doesn't matter what exercise or what activity we take on, we need to make sure that we have a, a, a a good level of protein, understanding what foods are available that provide us with good, strong protein, because you, at, at any age you need it, but more so as you age because your bones start to um, decrease in density, your muscles start to decrease in density. So by having these building blocks and eating properly, and then taking on a good fitness program, whichever is suitable for whoever, um, you're you're winning. You're winning all the way. Good. That's a good one. So what? So let's talk about the best sources for protein, because um, they're not all created the same. Now, this article that I found from the Mayo Clinic is interesting. It claims that the best uh, sources for protein are plant-based, which I find really interesting because uh, um, I know there's always been this question about getting complete proteins from uh, from plant-based. In fact, I remember way back 
In the 70s and 80s, there was this whole thing about combining proteins to make sure you had, you know, lentils and rice at the same meal and so on. And then later people came to the conclusion that it didn't need, it didn't need to eat them at the same time. As long as you had a wide variety, right. then um, uh, you would get what you needed. So, I mean, vegans can definitely grow, grow good uh, muscles. Um, they also get a lot of carbs. That's a whole different conversation. But um, there are vegan athletes who really do amazing. So there's no question yeah. that people can get sufficient uh, protein from uh, from uh, plant sources. And then they mention lean meats and skinless turkey or whatever, quite aside from the fact that who wants to eat skinless turkey? Um, I do think that it's important to have a certain level of healthy fats because uh, I, I lived through the fat-free craze of the 90s. Sure, you did too, Lynn. And um, all it resulted in was an obesity epidemic. Absolutely. Because the food tasted like cardboard. So in order to make up for the lack of flavor from the fats, they put in more sugar. So uh, it was absolutely terrible. So uh, I am not a huge fan of fat-free living. I mean... I found that doing actual keto was not, for my particular metabolism, was not very effective. Some people do amazing with keto. Uh, but uh, for me personally, that was not the best way to go. But it took me a few couple of years to find that out. But um, yeah, you need protein, you need fats, you need to, and you do need carbs. Like people who eat actually zero carbs are, um, are going to have trouble creating sufficient energy to run their bodies, especially if they're active. So, I mean, it kind of, you get the extremes, like you get the vegans who basically are mostly eating carbs with some plant-based protein. And then you have the carnivores who eat nothing but meat practically. I think they eat avocados as well, but, uh, and every, and for most people, I think the extreme uh, systems are not a great solution. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I actually went through the, not pork rinds. <laughs> yeah, the pork rinds. I mean, it's kind of a joke, but they, they do talk. They, I remember this whole conversation in the keto groups and so on about pork rinds. And, ew. <laughs> ew is right. <laughs> but um, so it's, it's, on the one hand, you know, people eat, for example, really processed, you know, factory made food that isn't necessarily of the best quality and you know luncheon meats or whatever they do contain protein if they're you know if they're meat that came from an animal but they might also have you know nitrates in them and they could be carcinogenic and you know to a certain extent so it's uh, um yeah i love avocados too uh, suzanne absolutely and they get your fats from your avocados. Yeah. That's a great source of healthy fats, avocados. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know, do you make a, do you make guacamole or do you just like put them in a salad? What do you do yeah. with them? I I've just <laughs> just recently started liking them. Oh, okay. And well, they don't uh, grow on Cape Cape Breton Island, so No. But, <laughs> That's but, okay. My son had them down at our house on the mainland, and he mm. and I was like, "No way!" And he said, "Just try, Mama." I said, "I have," but I liked what he had to uh, serve up, and so I, I will make guacamole. Guacamole uh, is nice. I mean, I mean, avocado by itself doesn't have a lot of a lot flavor. of flavor to it, but it takes flavor amazing. Yeah, avocado mayo and oil on toast. Yeah, I cook with avocado oil, actually. It's a great uh, cooking. Oh, oil. yes. It's got a really high, uh, uh, you know, burning point or whatever it's called. And so, you know, yeah. you can you can really cook with it without worrying that it's going to get burnt or rancid or right. denatured or all the other things. Avocado on toast? Oh, no, Suzanne, you know, you'll never be able to have a house if you eat avocado on toast. I'm just kidding. Who was it? This guy who told millennials tried on an everything bagel. Hmm. Who was this guy who told millennials that they, you know, they could afford houses if they just stopped eating avocado toast or something stupid? Like oh, that. really? Like that—that that is not the problem. 
with the housing market that people are eating too much avocado. To be fair, it, they don't grow here in Winnipeg either. So uh, they they can be kind of pricey. So um, anyway, how do we get to avocados? We're talking about protein. Our avocados are a great source of healthy fats. Yeah. I don't think they're a great source of protein, but they do go well with good sources of protein. Yeah. I'll tell you, I was down at the fish, down at the farmer's market a few weeks back, and uh, there were these cool little steaks that were there, and I asked him, like, what is that? And he said, it's tuna. Ooh. I've never eaten tuna, anything other than crumbled up tuna out of a can, and at which I have stopped doing that, too. And I said, just give me one, just this palm of my hand, something. Wow. I was totally shocked at how beautiful of a piece of meat that was. That's a tuna steak. The size of palm of your hand is about 28 grams of protein. It is so delicious. Mm. And so throw some vegetables with it. You got yourself a banging up meal. It, it was Probably so delicious. Well. You know what? Yeah, right? So I bought one then and I thought I'm getting another one. And I went back the next week. And so I go faithfully. I get one a week. It is expensive. But for myself, yeah. a treat. You know what? It's all worth it. <laughs> it's better than a couple bags of chips. But it, it what a great piece of protein. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I'm wondering where it comes from. Because, I mean, you live right on the Atlantic coast. You can probably get local fish. Yeah, it's all local. It's all local, wow. but I was I remember, astounded. I remember we were in, so we live in Winnipeg. We do get local fish from the from the lake, but sea oh, yes. fish, we can't get locally, of course, because we're in the middle of the continent. And I remember my husband and I going to Ireland five years ago, and it was just amazing. Like could, you go to a restaurant and the fish that you're eating had basically been caught that morning. And I'm sure that's the same where you are on the Atlantic yeah, coast. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, that is, I mean, it's kind of like eating vegetables from your own garden. It's just nothing compares. I mean, local is better than imported in general anyway. Absolutely. But, and when it's like, you know, walking out onto your, you know, into your garden to just pull off some, some fruit and vegetables and herbs. And, you know, I made, made a frittata for, for dinner because by the way eggs are an amazing source of protein they got a bad rap at some point because of the cholesterol but to be honest most people who have cholesterol issues and i should add here i am not a medical professional i am not a dietitian i do not play any of those things on the internet my understanding and don't you know don't uh, don't uh, quote me on this but my understanding is that People who have cholesterol issues, it's the cholesterol that they themselves are making in their liver. I don't think that eating eggs is going to increase your cholesterol. So uh, that's my understanding from having followed real dietitians for years. And that's that's what they were saying. So uh, we eat a fair amount of eggs. And the eggs also, the, the eggs are local. They come from a farm about, uh, well, about it's about 80 kilometers from here. But yeah, Canada is big. So 80 kilometers is local. And um, it's, uh, right. it's, it's, just, it's just amazing, like fresh eggs, like fresh vegetables or fresh fish. Yeah. It's a completely different experience. Yeah. They, eggs did get a bad rap for a bit about cholesterol, but it's not true. E eggs are yeah. a whole food. Egg, They're amazing. And... and, and, and for myself, the only thing I'll eat are the homegrown. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, a couple bucks, but you know what? You know what you're getting. Um, yeah. I don't, I would never recommend just the white eggs off the shelf, but you can, you can buy them through like in the um, vegetarian departments of a grocery store. Or How many times have you gone driving down the road and that little sign is out there, you know, eggs for sale. Go up Especially and see them. Summer, yeah. yeah. And you know what you're getting. It's uh and they taste so much better. So yeah, much I, better. I get eggs from a from a local farm. So yeah. 
the farmer she comes in you know once or twice a month and she brings yeah. eggs from her farm and and we visited there as well and so like you because it's a small farm you can actually go into the barn like the big industrial ones like it's all the bio security and so on and you know you can't go and see and they probably don't want you to see anyway yeah but the, in this case like it was like the chickens are like just the hens are like everywhere and it's mm. running around the farm and pecking in the dirt and best like be. ever yeah it's amazing so uh, yeah local local is amazing absolutely yeah. But uh, sometimes you do need to supplement. I mean, I could probably eat eggs all day, but it probably wouldn't. At some point, it would just be any sort of monoculture of anything. Eating too much of any one thing is not great. So I we do use protein supplements because we are older and active. <laughs> so uh, right, right. You're going to need to eat a lot of eggs or a lot of a lot of tuna steaks to get all of that without supplementation. And to be fair, you know, we have busy lives. Sometimes you just need to throw something in the blender and drink it and move on. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that we have those. And do we have this yeah. new seven day reset happening? Something, what is uh, that uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, pardon me? The seven day reset. Do, I think you know more about that than yes. I do. Can you uh, I, I'm not sure if I know more about it, but I, I know that it's, uh, I saw that you've you got one day, yeah, one day cleanse. You've got your shakes, everything, everything ready for your seven days, all science backed as regards resetting your system. And uh, for the, um, the value of it, it's really worth the challenge. I would say challenge. It's worth the seven day challenge to invest yeah. in because it's all about resetting your system. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. And I think it's the cleanse is coming in mango this time. It's the new flavor. Oh, the liquid. Cause I have, yes. I have the, the powder. Oh, this is awesome. So, so our friends who are partying on boats and so on, when they get off the boat, they're going to need to, some sort of reset you reset know? that's right <laughs> that's right something that i i often like i eat a lot of is um red meat i love a steak just the palm of my hand and i have homegrown carrots with it and whatever else but oh, um, a lot of people are, are are not into the the red meat but uh for myself and my own system i know how it functions I feel that it craves that really wholesome, good piece of steak. I I don't, I wouldn't recommend too much hamburger because you don't really know what's in the mix. Yeah. But to get a good piece of steak, you know, 22 grams, you know, it's about a three ounce steak. You can't beat that. Something else that's good is, um, and it's almost 100% protein would be your, your chicken breast and your chicken, uh, sorry, Chicken breast and turkey breast. Those two also are excellent for adding to your protein base. Salmon. I love salmon. Yeah. Peanut butter. I mean, it has to come a long way to get here, but it's frozen, you know, on the ship. So it's, it's, for you, true enough. True enough. Yeah. So do you get the wild caught or do you get the farmed? I try to avoid the farmed if I can. But yeah. um I would get it wild and I don't eat cod, but, um, mm. but most of our fish that I would get would be like from the Atlantic waters. Yeah. But I'm just thinking that like around here, if you, if you get Atlantic salmon, it's generally farmed. Whereas the yes. Pacific salmon will be, uh, yes. will be uh, um, wild caught. Yeah. Fish is more affordable at this time. Suzanne says. We, so we have a, let me, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Um, no. Up in the highlands, we've got quite a salmon farm up there. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's doing amazing. I And again, I don't buy my fish from, uh, mine is always wild if I buy salmon. It is expensive right now. 
Yeah. Very expensive. But in Canada, a lot of things are expensive. But. You know what? Compared to the States, we're doing pretty well. I mean, we've got like 7% inflation. They're close to 10. Yeah. Just uh, there's a few things that yeah. rampant there. But you know, when you're, feel, you're feeling a little hungry and you need just a little boost, there's nothing wrong with taking a spoon and sticking it in your peanut butter and getting a good scoop of peanut butter. I love peanut butter. We're back at the plant-based protein here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's good for you. Um, and, and peanuts, like nuts, any kinds of nuts. I have a big bag of cashews always in my Jeep so that I have something to eat while I'm driving if I get hungry. But just you want to make good choices so that your body is feels healthy. It grows healthy. Your muscles grow healthy. Uh, and it also wow. affects, you know, your your daily functioning. Pardon? I Pardon said me? walnuts. Walnuts are better for you than cashews. But all, all, all of this, eating healthy like this and being concerned about, you know, the amount that you're taking in. I mean, protein may be really good, but if you ain't make, eat too much of it, then now you're tipping on the other side. But it's all about being healthy because that's also what helps you in your day-to-day -day living, your mindset, being positive, you're feeling good, your gut feels good. So, and you're in your regular in your bodily functions. So, you want to make sure that you eat healthy and mm -hmm. weigh out your protein so that your day is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Um, and you need some carbs with that. One thing that I noticed when I was not having any carbs was definitely it's really need bad carbs, food. not it's as really many as people food. think. <laughs> Quite aside from anything else, people who don't eat any carbs tend to be grumpy. <laughs> Are you there, Lynn? You're Are they ever? Yeah. And the thing is, you, you can't cut everything out. You know, you've got no. to, uh, with everything, show your power of reason. Well, and you know, and it's like, you know, if you have a glass of, yeah. of red wine, you know, now and then, or even white wine. This time of year, white wine is nice because it's when it's hot. But, you know, if you can have one glass and enjoy it, then you're going to you're going to be good. But uh, people need to really keep track of uh, what they're doing. Are you there, Lynn? I'm kind of losing you here. Yeah, you I me? see that, but I'm back. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Look at that. We almost talked for 30 minutes again, just like that. It's not hard. And thank you, Suzanne, for, for chatting with us. It uh, makes it so much more fun. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I'm going to be off for the next couple of weeks. I am going to Victoria to visit family. So I'm going to have fun. So Lynn is going to be doing her stream yard. I think I'll, will you be doing it on your Facebook page as well or just into the Probably. Power to Transform? Oh, mainly Power to Transform. Okay. Yeah. Because um, it's got a good. Point. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to hear Lynn talking about stuff, you're going to have to join our Facebook group. And if you wanted to do that, just to hear us and uh, to uh, learn more about what we do, just drop either of us a message, and uh, we will be happy to add you to that Facebook group. So definitely. Uh, it's, it's a good place. There's a lot of talk there about uh, about healthy healthy eating, healthy uh, exercise, mindset, all the important things that you need to uh, age with vigor, with dignity, with uh, you know having a good life. We want to live a long life and be healthy because it's what we got, right? Is our life right here, and why not why not enjoy it while we can? I think I may have lost you again. Cape Breton is a long way from here. <laughs> so this might be a good time to close her down because uh, I think I've lost my friend Lynn here. And um, 
we're coming up on the 30 minute mark. So thank you to everyone who's watching, whether you're live, whether you're watching a replay, either on Facebook or on LinkedIn or on YouTube or anywhere else where we're, where we're going to put this recording. So uh, yeah, thank you again for joining us. Oh, there you are. I can hear you again. Lost you for a bit. Is it storming on Cape, on Cape Breton? Seem to have lost her. So this is a good time to close it down. Thank you again. I appreciate everyone who watches, everyone who participates, everyone who drops a comment. Thank you so much. Whoops, lost my limb. So have a good evening. Like I said, I will be off for a couple of weeks, but Lynn will be streaming into the Power to Transform. Ah, oh, are you back? Ah, not quite. So I'm going to end the broadcast. So have a good evening, everyone. Bye.